Hi everyone, this is a quick update to my video of yesterday where I showed the difference between a genuine nano VNA and a cheap clone from AliExpress. If you remember that video and if you haven't watched it, I suggest you do it now. Uh, in that video, I showed that the performance of the clone is really, really not as good as the performance of the original one. And at the end of the video, I, one of the assumptions I'm making is that the original one, the genuine one, has multiple shields. And I believe that one of the possible reasons why the performance of the clone one is not as good is because it doesn't have the shields. And today I decided to disassemble it and see if I could do something. And what I decided to do is to add shields myself, because what I noticed is that on the PCB, we have actually mounts for the shields and to save, I don't know, like 20 cents or something, the manufacturer of the clone decided not to populate those shields. But we, we can see that we have the, the snaps that are supposed to hold the, the shields in place. So what I decided to do as a quick test is to manufacture my own shields uh, simply using some copper tape. Uh, this type of tape is very useful because you can actually solder to it and it's also very easy to bend. So what I did is I just cut a small piece and I bend it on the corner of my uh, table, basically. And I already made one of, one of the shield here. So I just put it in, in, in place and, and uh, cut it to the right dimensions. And I just put just a tack, just a point of solder at each mount. And, and this is holding the shield in place. I also put a layer of Captain tape directly on the PCB. I'm not sure this is necessary. It's also possible that it will be detrimental. I'm not sure, but I can always remove it from the outside of the shield by pulling on it if it's really a problem. So for now, I'm going to leave the captain tape as an extra safety measure, but I'm not sure it's necessary because when I make the shield, I'm leaving the, the backing on the, the adhesive. So, so this is also a very good insulator. So I'm going to continue to build the, the shields for the two remaining locations. Then we're going to continue the video and we're going to compare the performance of that same instrument with and without the shields. Here is a very quick snapshot to show you the progress. So I bent uh, the shield here on the right, in the front and in the rear, folded on the sides and I soldered at three locations on top of the preview shield because I, there was, for some reason, there was only one row of uh, uh, snaps on the PCB. So the first two sections are completed. I'm now going to do the last section here at the bottom. Same technique, same thing. So after using nano VNA app to capture the measurements, uh, I saved the measurement result as a CSV file and I used the methodology that I showed in the previous video to plot the data and compare it with the previous set of data that I have captured using the same parameters uh, on the same instruments with exactly the same calibration kit as always. Uh, as a reminder, the measurement parameters I have chosen is to start at 10 MHz, stop at 1.5 gig, me measure 801 points over that span, and I did an average of 50 acquisitions to smooth the data. Because if I don't do that, there's a little bit of noise on the measurement. And what we want to see is uh, we want to have a bit more sensitivity on that measurement. So doing an averaging allows us to see a little bit beyond that noise. And the results are interesting. Unfortunately, uh, we are not solving the problem. Uh, however, we are eliminating a few artifacts. For instance, the most noticeable one is the one that is approximately at, uh, I would say, uh, 1090 MHz. There is some kind of resonance or something without the shield, which is causing a dip. Uh, and we no longer have that dip uh, on, um, if we add the shields. Interestingly, uh, the, the shield doesn't help everywhere. Uh, it seems that it's increasing the noise floor in a few frequencies beyond that one. For instance, if we look between 200 and 400 megahertz, we can see that the trace of the shielded clone is actually higher than the trace without the shielded clone. Uh, the shielded clone. But I think it's actually a positive thing. What's possible is that uh, this reduced uh, sensitivity was either possibly a trap uh, of uh, 
the RF uh, like some oscillation somewhere that was artificially reducing the, the signal, that's possible. But also, to be very honest, it's possible my shields are not that great. Uh, I don't really like the way they are grounded. Normally, you want to have much more uh, connections with the, the, the ground. Uh, so that, that could also be a possibility. So I think the takeaway of that exercise is that we have learned how to make custom shields. Uh, we have learned how to play with a copper tape to do that. Uh, but in the specific case of, the, of those nano VNA clones, I wouldn't say, unfortunately, that adding a shield is going to have a um, significant effect. So it's not going to fix those clones. So that was a short video, but it's just something I wanted to share with you because I think it's interesting. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time for the next video.